the time I hated my life. Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. How you doing, beautiful people? All is well over this way. Thank you, God. Oh, it was a time your girl here did not enjoy her life. It was 1999. Every time I say that year, I think about Prince. Before I get started, please hit like and subscribe. Ooh, lost my beloved father to a massive heart attack. Shocked my family. And to set the record straight, some people say, well, but mom is mom. Losing mom is the worst. My sisters and I, we didn't rate our parents like that. My mom worked second shift, dad worked first. My dad cooked our food. Mom cook was a great cook too, but dad worked first shift, made great collard greens, barbecue dressing, pulled out the tree for Christmas, bought Easter egg dye for Easter, um, barbecue for the fourth, Memorial Day took us to Nashville each summer, Detroit in the 80s and 70s, and Mobile, Alabama. My father was very instrumental in my life, in our life. He ran the house. So we came from that type of household. He was um, the leader. And we looked up to dad. And if anything went wrong, I'm going to tell my daddy. Okay, so I just want to set that like that so you'll see how hurt we were when we lost him. Um, Two months later, the ex filed for divorce, which whatever. Okay, but what it did do was set the tone for me because I'm trying to process the sudden passing of my dad. Then I have this abusive situation. Then he files for divorce. I'm getting to the point where I kind of don't even want to talk about it no more because it's old news, but it's part of my past. So I have to frame it like that. But I just want to put that behind. That is behind me. But I just want to show you all how I hate it my life so after that in my mind once I move out get my own place everything will be great and it's like to me the mind <laughs> not knocking my 20 some year olds because um your life goes different than mine but at that time I was 29 and, and I was naive as soon as I leave you know once I leave him I'll you know get remarried in a couple of years well, it's 20 some years later, I'm still not remarried. So this tells you, you know, you can have these fantasies or things in your mind, but it doesn't mean life is going to go that way. It's okay. Now it's okay some days, but it's just, it's just weird how you think as a 20 some year old for me, that's, that was how I was. So after that I began to date. Here and there, nothing stuck. Just drama. It just wasn't good situations going on. That um, made me feel negative at times. I'm mad because my dad passed away. I'm just mad because I had been in that bad relationship. And I'm blaming myself for that. It was just a lot of stuff going on with me internally, mentally. And I stayed in that spiral for years. It wasn't a quick fix. This is when I began to get into therapy and just so searching for peace. I hated the jobs I did. I worked in purchasing most of the time as an administrative type role and an administrative type role hated it. I began to get more into purchasing that got a little better and I began to make more money because I knew this program called SAP and that helped me raise my salary got my bachelor's degree around 32 still just wasn't quite happy just wasn't happy um and it wasn't until 2006 that things improved and it took a lot of soul searching reading books i would go to borders books sometimes i feel depressed i just grab my keys go to borders books go to the self-help section and just sit there for two hours reading have my mocha latte and read books and you know buy a couple 
but I kept doing this. And I talked to my friend. I'm like, how do you keep your mood stable? She said, kind of comes natural for her, but talk to her mom. Her mom had been through a lot. Her mom almost died from being strangled by her husband at the time. And so she told me to read The Power of Positive Thinking. I read that book and combined with prayers that avail much, a book of a bunch of prayers I still have both to this day. And that's when things begin to change. I'm doing this podcast just to show you your circumstances does not have to make you be bitter. You can be better. You can be greater later. I went on after that. Once I changed my mindset, ooh, I started feeling like a new person. I felt so good. That's right when I got sick. But I was grateful, not to get sick, but I was grateful that I was in a better frame of mind because if I had, had have gotten sick, when I was super depressed in 2000, 2001, I might not be here because I don't know if I would have had that strength to fight like I had when I was positive. That's why everything happens for a reason. And, you know, after all of that stuff happened and I got better, that's when I met the love of my life. And this is when, you know, things really begin to get better. More income good relationship, positive mindset. And you know those other years didn't come without more heartache from losing mom, getting sick again. I lost a dear friend. I lost a couple of dear friends in there. Uh, Yeah, several. Uh, That really hurt too because I still keep thinking about all of my friends that I lost. But unfortunately, loss is part of life, but it's not easy, especially when they're younger. It don't matter about the age, does it? You can make it, whatever you're going through. Even when it seems like your back is up against the wall. Even when society says, eh, you too old, girl. You ain't gonna never get married. Don't believe that stuff. Even when you feel like you're stuck at a job, we never stuck. We never stuck. We never, we're never stuck. Keep fighting with every fiber of your being because you're right at the edge of a breakthrough. Your change is right there, but if you give up, you'll never get to it. I hate I had to go through all that stuff, but it made me a better person. Now I have a YouTube channel. Now I'm a therapist. So everything happened for a reason. Nothing is an accident. Nothing is by happenstance or coincidence. You are right where you need to be. Tammy C. Walker, signing off. Bye-bye.